Welcome to the Physics Tips for Cambridge Students YouTube channel where we give solutions and give help to students uh, doing the 0625 IGCC course and uh, the 9702 A-level physics. Now in this video we are going to be focusing on the 9702 physics syllabus which is uh, the topic on gravitational fields. Now I'm going to do a question from the November 2020 paper 42 that is question number one please remember to subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification bell so that you get notified of uh, such videos in the future without get uh, much further ado let's get started now the November 2020 paper 42 question number one on gravitational fields 1A says define gravitational potential at a point. Now the gravitational potential at a point is defined as the work done per unit mass in moving the mass from infinity to the point in the gravitational field. The work done per unit mass in moving the mass from infinity to the point in the gravitational field. So unit mass is very important there. Also the fact that you are moving it from infinity to the position where it is in the gravitational field. So those are very important. 1b, an isolated solid sphere of radius r may be assumed to have its mass m concentrated at its center. The magnitude of the gravitational potential at the surface of the sphere is phi. On figure 1.1 show the variation of the gravitational potential with distance d from the center of the sphere for values of d from d is equal to r to d is equal to 4r. Now since the gravitational field is an attractive field, gravitational potential is also must be negative. So we expect our graph to occupy the negative quadrant there. Also we know that potential at infinity is taken to be zero. So potential at infinity is taken to be zero. Some use the symbol u or symbol v is okay. So potential at infinity is zero and elsewhere in the gravitational field, the potential is negative, right? Now the formula for potential is uh, minus g big M over r. Now in this case, we are given the symbol small r, so we have to be careful there. We need to change that to small r. Okay. Now, we take for instance, we are told that the potential at uh, the surface is uh, phi. So which means at the surface, we are going to have phi. That is when uh, the distance d is equal to r, right there. We're going to have phi. So which means when our distance is now 2r, our v at that position 2r will be equal to minus gm over 2r, small letter r, minus gm over small letter r, which means it's going to be half the original potential. So it's going to be 0 0.55. Similarly, when the distance is 4r, you find that it's going to be g minus gm over 4r. So it's just going to be a quarter of that. So you have to be careful. So we're going to start our graph from that position when um, phi is equal to, uh, when, when yes, minus 1, there, there about. Because remember I said we are occupying the negative quadrant. So our graph has to pass through this point again when that is equal to that. And then when... It's equal to 4r, d is equal to 4r. We expect our graph to pass through 0 0.25 right there. So which means our graph has to be a smooth curve, please, like that. Okay, so our graph is going to be like that. So starting from, from r. Right, then part c says the sphere in b is a planet with radius r of 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 meters 
and a mass M of 6.0 times 10 power 24 kgs. The planet has no atmosphere. A rock of mass 3.4 times 10 to the power of 3 kg moves directly towards the planet. Its distance from the center of the planet changes from 4r to 3r. Part 1 says calculate the change in the gravitational potential energy of the rock. Now the formula for gravitational potential energy is equal to Okay, let me solve that. Okay. So let's just call it um, GPE is going to be equal to minus G big M small m over r. That is the formula. So which means this object is going to move from 4r to 3r on our graph there, 4r to 3r. So which means the change in the gravitational potential energy is going to be equal to uh, that the second case minus the change in the gravitational potential energy R1. Okay, so this is supposed to be big R. So we can factor out uh, GMM. We can factor out GMM. And then we are going to have it as uh, GM minus GM M bracket 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. So that's how it's going to be. And if you work it out, because we know G is 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11, and then we know the masses are given, you should get a change of 1.8. I don't know what's going on there. Times 10. To the power of 10 joules. Okay, so that's it. Then says, explain whether the rock's speed increases, decreases, or stays the same. Now, this rock, it's starting off from, as we go back to our graph, the rock starts off from there, where the potential energy is greater. Remember, we said that the maximum potential energy is at infinity where it is a value of zero. Okay, potential, maximum potential is zero. Now, the difference in potential and potential energy, we, we know that uh, it's just multi potential times M gives you potential energy. So, the value of the potential energy here is negative. The value of potential energy there was less negative. In other words, it's close to, to zero. So which means it's going to lose potential energy moving from 4R to 3R. It's losing potential energy because, remember, potential energy is a function of uh, distance. So as it moves from 4R to 3R, the value becomes less, uh, becomes more negative. In other words, from uh, 4R to 3R. So it has lost potential energy. If it has lost potential energy, it means that its kinetic energy must increase. Okay. So it loses EP, potential energy EP. Therefore, the EK must increase. I hope it makes sense. Okay, I think that is... That marks the end of this question on gravitational fields. Right, so uh, please do subscribe and uh, like this video if you have uh, found any use in it. And also hit the notification bell so that you get notified of uh, future videos like this one. Signing out.